let's talk about this with Edward Ahmed Mitchell. He is the executive director of the Council on American Islamic Relations in Georgia. And Brian Robinson, uh, Republican strategist and former assistant chief of staff for communications for Governor, uh, Georgia Governor, I should say, Nathan Deal. Thank you both for being here. It was interesting watching both of you watch that piece. Yeah. Uh, and you're both smiling, you know, and kind of laughing with this family. What's your reaction to? Uh, this this uh, executive order. Well, look, as an American, as a Muslim, as an attorney, I'm offended on all counts. And, and let's be clear, these, these executive orders are not about keeping America safe. They're about keeping America racially, culturally, and religiously monolithic. President Trump, over the past year and for longer, has expressed animus towards Muslims and refugees. He's appointed Steve Bannon, a white nationalist, as a senior advisor, Michael Flynn, an anti-Muslim bigot, as his national security advisor. And he took advice from one of the people who helped write Arizona's anti-immigration bill. So these executive orders are just a natural and logical end result of all of that bigotry. But you see the human toll that it will take on mm -hmm. people in this country and people around the world. Brian, your reaction to that? I think so much of what he said reflects why so many Americans voted for Donald Trump, because they're tired of being called bigots for not wanting to see their country change so much so fast to bring them in at a rate faster than they can assimilate. We're not bringing in engineers and technology experts. We're bringing in people who, with low education backgrounds, they are going to be a burden on taxpayers. And it's a burden that Americans have taken on. We, we don't have know done that all of them are going to be a burden. There, I mean, there are people that have been coming from Syria majority, who, the, the who are, are well educated. That has not been the vast majority of what we're getting. Y'all had a piece earlier in Clarkston, Georgia. It's not a, a community of uh, engineers, doctors, and lawyers. It's what do not. you say to France's foreign minister today, who just just in the last hour came out and said, we have an obligation to help these people as, as leaders of nations? What do you say to that? I say that there are a lot of tragic stories out there. There's no doubt. Anybody who, who denies that doesn't have a heart or doesn't have eyes. But France, it's ironic to, to, to hear it from them because there's been a huge backlash in France against the refugees coming in there. And how could they not after the terrible violence that they've seen in the attacks in Paris and in other places where a priest's uh, throat was slit, the, the truck in, in Nice? How can they not have a backlash? You know, France has been much tougher than we have. Uh, they've banned headscarves for Muslim uh, schoolgirls. You know, we haven't done that here. So it's ironic that France would... would point a finger at us. Edward, what do you say to that? And do do you understand the fear, I guess, that some people feel? Well, look, first of all, we govern ourselves not by fear, but by a constitution, by logic, mm -hmm. right? Now, I work with refugee groups. Many of the refugees who come to America from Syria actually are educated people. Some are doctors and engineers, but because of the tyranny of Bashar al-Assad, their lives have been ruined too, and they've come here to build a better life. And America is of immigrants. It has always been a nation of immigrants, and President Trump cannot change that with an executive order. So that's the moral issue, but there's also a legal issue here. That that's President what I was going to say. Okay, is this yeah. constitutional? Well, you know, as an attorney, I've got to admit that President Trump does have wide latitude to control who comes in and out of the country, but he doesn't have unlimited latitude. He's the president, not the emperor. So if you're going to sign an executive order, as he has done, that prioritizes people of one particular faith as opposed to others, that could be a, a violation of the First Amendment. And to the extent that this has also been designed and implemented for the purpose of targeting Muslims and banning Muslims to the extent that he can, that also runs afoul of the Constitution. So we intend to, to make the legal argument. Do you support a, a more stringent vetting process? Well, that's the, that's the interesting thing is that Syrian refugees already go through a very intense vetting process. In fact, it takes about two years for any Syrian refugee to come to this country because they go through such an intense vetting process. And even under President Trump's administration, I'm sure our law enforcement authorities are sophisticated enough to continue to vet any refugees and any agreements as okay. they should. I only have a couple of seconds left. I want to get one thing from you and one thing from yeah. you then, Brian. If President Trump was sitting in front of you, what would you want him to know? What would you say to him? I would say that this isn't a game. You know, you might have a prejudice against people, but signing an executive order has real consequences for people. We're already getting reports of people with student visas, tourist visas, work visas, afraid of being deported, people trying to come into the country, not being able to get in. And now you've got people who may die because they cannot get out of Syria and other places that are war-torn. So this really has human consequences. You fulfilling a bad campaign pledge uh, is not worth it if it's going to cost human life. Brian, how do we unite the country when this is what we're seeing? Well, you know, and in some ways, this does unite the country because Trump campaigned on this and he's following through on what he promised. Whether it's politically correct or not, 
when Trump first went down this road in the campaign, we saw polling coming back showing that Americans were like, yeah, you agree with this. And, and it's not always in the narrative and in the media, but Americans are concerned. One, look at San Bernardino, looking at Orlando. You're not just talking about new immigrants. You're talking about second generation. So you're bringing them in, and this has been true in Europe as well, that it's not always the first generation of refugees that cause the problem. Often they are radicalized in the second generation. So this could be a long-term problem it, it, But us. it's not always refugees uh, either. I mean, it's there are, always, there are no. Americans, Americans who have been radicalized as well, just to be really transparent. But we so appreciate the both of you coming in and having this conversation with Thank us. Thank you. Thank